Finally, I think the neighbours stopped the lawnmower. Every time I go to start filming, whippersnipper, lawnmower. I'm making content here. I'm making content here, all right? What I learned from my movement teacher training course. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Aaron, and this is the final episode in this series, which recaps my movement teacher training I've been doing over the last two months with my teacher, Jackson Lanarm at Movement 4 in Brisbane. I've been traveling down once a week to Brisbane, which is around two, two hours, two and a half hours with bad traffic from my place on the Sunshine Coast every Tuesday, spending the day there with him in the gym to learn about movement through the lens of a teacher. And I've been sitting in on a lot of his classes, group classes, one-on-one -on -one classes, locomotion classes, strength and movement classes, hand balancing classes, you name it to try and absorb as much as I possibly can in the last two months. So this is a recap of that process. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started and why not start with me teaching you how to do a muscle up. I'll demonstrate here the full movement, which requires the false grip, taking the starting position, arms fully extended. Notice the palms facing out, legs out in front, we pull to the chest, transition through, dip up, front support hold, dip lowering down into the negative transition, and we return to the starting position, palms facing out. So let's break it down, starting with prerequisites. The first prerequisite you will need to do the muscle up as a general guide is the chest to bar chin up. If you can do five of these with strict form, feet out in front, the bar touching the chest, a two second pause at the top of the movement, then you have all the power you need to do the muscle up on the rings. Next, you'll need the ring dip. The ring dip forms an essential part of the muscle up, so you need to be able to do at least one of these full depth ring dips. Here I'm doing them for reps, feet stay out in front, and I'm using the front support hold where the hands turn out at the top of the movement. Next, you'll need to understand the false grip. The false grip is a grip that gymnasts use to grip the ring, which essentially ensures that the bony underside of the wrist stays on top of the ring the whole time. This is very uncomfortable as a beginner and it's still uncomfortable for me. However, I have started to develop some calluses on the bottom of my wrist as a result of doing lots of these and it gets more comfortable as you get used to the position. But it's absolutely crucial that you can maintain this position throughout the muscle up to ensure that you can get up and over the ring and back down again. Once you have the false grip, you can start to work false grip chins. Take the false grip setup, feet out in front, arms straight, palms turn out to start, Turn the palms in and pull until the thumbs touch the nipples. And repeat this for five reps. The transition drill. Make sure the rings are low enough so that your feet can touch the ground. Take the top position that you just finished with from the false grip chin and using your feet as leverage Poke your chest through the rings, keeping the elbows tight, keeping that thumbs close to the nipples at all times. And then just practice going through the hole and back down again, keeping those elbows tight and thumbs to the nipple. Negatives. For this position, use a box to step into the top position or jump into that position. Front support, lowering down, Head and chest go out in front, as do the legs. The thumbs stay at the nipples, elbows stay tight, lowering through the hole and down. 
into that bottom position, starting again. You really need to maintain the false grip as you lower down. To do that, the elbows stay tight and the thumbs stay with the nipples connected to the chest. Putting it all together. Now we have all the pieces, let's take another look at the full muscle up. Starting from the bottom position, we pull until those thumbs touch the nipples. We put the head and chest through the hole. We dip up into the front support. We slowly lower down, head and chest out in front. We roll back through, keeping the elbows tight, thumbs to the nipples, legs out in front, maintaining that false grip the whole time and slowly lower down until the palms face out at the bottom. The muscle up was just one element of many that some of Jackson's students at headquarters movement for in Brisbane we're working on along with many other things, including their handstands. Here, Jackson is playing around with his one arm handstand on the box, which is always awesome to see just where you can take the hand balancing. One thing I learned was if I could goof around with Jackson, then it would buy me a little more time in between sets. On this occasion in my private session with him, we were working on the negative stall the press from an elevated hand position. This is a work in progress for me. It needs a lot more work to tidy up. I need more compression and mobility to make it happen, but it was a fantastic skill to work on with a coach in person to get all the great cues that are gonna unlock this skill for me. Here Jackson demonstrates the stall to press from the floor. Notice the compression, the scapular position, the open line at the top of the handstand, the spinal articulation and roll on the way down as he compresses and maintains that beautiful shoulder position that I am still working on. He does four reps here with no warm up at all to demonstrate what is possible over time with consistent practice. Locomotion has been one of the most enjoyable aspects of the teacher training because it involves people and these partner drills like this Zen Archer drill is so much fun and promotes unorthodox positions, gets people into ranges of motion without really being aware of what they're doing. It takes away premeditation and thought it creates improvisation, it's intuitive, there's an amazing energy in the room, different chemistry between partners. You get a crazy sweat because you have to work so hard, lots of low squats, some bridging, mobility, strength, coordination, timing. It's just a beautiful part of the practice. The best way to do this Zen Archer drill is to have the music up really loud and the only rule really is no talking. We all have so much verbal diarrhea through our lives. There's so much talking, so much chat and empty words. The only language that matters with this drill is the language of movement, the language of your body. Although you can't help but have a laugh sometimes at some of the positions you find yourself in, it reminds me a lot of that game Twister, only you don't have colored circles on the floor. A great practice, a great way to connect with others, a great way to move. 
So what in a movement practice do people benefit most from? Well, you guessed it. Let's start with the squat. The squat is one of the most beneficial positions for the human body, particularly for Westerners who do a lot of sitting at desks, in cars. We don't find ourselves in this position much in our daily lives. So taking time, a few minutes each day to get into the low squat position and just move around, do some twisting, move the knees, spend some time in this position. It has enormous benefit to the posture, to the hips or the spine. It's a very corrective movement with high value. And it should form the foundation for any solid movement practice. The second most important movement for a healthy human being is the hang. As Westerners, we're sedentary, we're hunched, we sit forwards. The hang promotes open posture. It lengthens the spine. It opens the shoulders. It provides beautiful traction for the body. You can hang passively. You can hang actively. It's all extremely beneficial and an absolute must for anyone who cares about their health. The next most important movement is movement of the spine. A few minutes each day, bending the spine, articulating each vertebrae will help reduce pain and just promote better health. It's an absolute must. The next most important movement to look at daily should be opening the shoulders. Modern living has our shoulders in a closed position. We sit over our phones, over our computers, we drive our cars. So these sorts of drills restore shoulder function, help posture, and take away pain in the shoulder capsule. A few minutes of these drills each day is highly worth your time. Finally, most humans will benefit from addressing wrist health. Strengthening the wrists has enormous benefit for everyone. One of the most common injuries is the wrist injury. When people have a fall, they put their arm out, they break their wrist. This can be avoided by strengthening the wrists, which is particularly beneficial if you want to get into handstands or locomotion. You'll need to make sure that your wrists can tolerate the load and it's just good to have strong, healthy wrists to be a functional human being. So you might be asking yourself, why do all this? Why move it all? Well, my answer is freedom. The freedom to move through space, to feel strong, to feel mobile, to creatively move my body, to music, to different patterns, to bend, to step, to hop, to jump, to flip, to feel good in my own skin, to apply my mind, then to become free of my mind, to not think at all, to allow the greater natural intelligence of my body to guide me without thought, to find stillness after chaos, to feel like I'm flying, to make friends with gravity, not fight it, to know that I can jump and twist and fight if I need, to be a good example for my children, to show them that getting older doesn't mean you stop moving, to skate after them to ride bikes with them, to play with them, to be there for them, to teach them movement is life. Well, there it is, guys. The end of this episode and the end of this series. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I will be sharing more about my teaching in the future and also just more on this channel about movement and 
other related topics. So stay tuned. See you guys.